summarize, we are currently seeing a uh, solar flare from region 3217. It's an X1.1. The flare is occurring on the northern portion of that umbra from 3217, and there is a very large chronomass ejection that's associated to this flare. And that uh, chronomass ejection does appear that it will be a, a ICME, interplanetary chronomass ejection. And I am expecting that to be projected towards Earth. So we will most likely see this impact Earth's uh, magnetosphere. Our uh, geomagnetic energy will be <laughs> rattled, as it were. And we will probably see geomagnetic storms. Very likely to see a G1 from this activity, from what I can tell so far. But uh, granted, this is definitely going to take further uh, analysis to know for sure. This is going to be probably two to three hours before you can see more of that uh, energy and where it's going and displacement, especially counting the speed from Soho, Lasco, C2, and C3. And that's how we will be able to decipher exactly uh, when we expect it, within a plus or minus six hours typically, and how much of it we expect. But this does appear to be very uh, orientated in a way that Earth will be impacted. There we are. And good morning to everyone. I had just woke up. <laughs> so I haven't even had my coffee yet. But uh, yeah, late, late morning for me. Uh, definitely very interesting activity. I've uh, been watching for it, waiting for it, but uh, not seen uh, any inclination. So this is a nice little surprise for this morning. The potential's been there, but I've not seen the... Uh, Typically, when I when I see an X class about to happen or something like that, I can tell a lot of that crossing waves. I've been having migraines, so it's hard for me to focus on some of these images. But typically, I can tell uh, which patterns to look for, or what patterns I I am looking for and seeing where such a flare will happen. But as I said, the potential is definitely there. In fact, let's take a look at the HMIBC. <coughs> Pardon me. HMI. And looking at HMIBC, we can see there a lot of the uh, positive energy on the top or portion, upper portion, uh, cutting in right in that umbra at the spot there. It's not necessarily unusual, but it does have a lot of this negative positive area that uh, is clashing here underneath that. And then additionally from that, the amount of plasma that was on top of it, creating a uh, sort of a weight on top of that uh, activity underneath, making it difficult for it to find any room to grow. So we have what's already a, a region that needs to grow, expand, and it's got the energy pushing through the, the surface, but the corona's heavy weighed down from that uh, filament that was over the top of it, so it didn't have anywhere to push through, so it ended up causing that collision of the, the uh, magnetic uh, the <laughs> magnetic field lines. And then uh, that's thus we got our flare. That's a very big umbra in the uh, 3219 as well. Right, let's go ahead and take a look. Let's see if we can get a nice view here. Yes. So I'm looking at 335 angstroms. Uh, we can see that a lot of that heavier plasma is continually moving upward and outward. And this does have a, once again, a good projection towards Earth. <clears throat> and back to 171. And that way we take a closer look at these loops themselves. I'm going to make some coffee, and, uh, and I'll 
I'll see you in a little bit.